Interactive Brokers is an incredibly popular trading platform and available to nearly every country out there. Since it can be a bit confusing when first getting started, we'll be going through the app every step of the way. After today, you should all leave here feeling a whole lot more comfortable both buying and selling stock, options, customizing your charts, and just generally anything using the app. Now, beginning with the general navigation of the app, you'll notice your main tools are actually located at the very bottom of your screen. These tabs can be customized and adjusted, but the default tabs are gonna include your homepage, your portfolio tab, your trade page, your watch list, and the more button to access all of the other tools inside here. This more tab is also where you guys could come to change the basic appearance settings of the app. So for example, if we come down here to the configuration button, go ahead and select that. Then looking down below in the display section, we'll see a tab there marked application theme. And if we click on that, we could actually flip it over from the dark theme to the light theme. In my case, I actually prefer the dark theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it again flip it back over to the dark theme. Now, since we will spend most of our time in this app on those main navigational tabs at the bottom, let me go ahead and go through each of those a little bit more in depth. To begin with, the very first tab you'll see here at the very bottom is your home screen. Let's go ahead and open that up. This tab will actually show us a brief overview of our current positions in the account, a look at what the market is doing today, and just some general news that we might wanna be aware of. So looking at the top here, you can actually see my current positions in the account. That would include both Apple and Netflix. Right below that, we can get a little brief description of what the overall market did today. So the S&P was up just shy of 0.2%, uh, NASDAQ up 1.2% and so on. Looking right below that, we can then see some news. And if we scroll down, we can actually see one of my watch lists down here of companies that I'm keeping track of. The next tab at the bottom is the portfolio tab. Let's go ahead and click on that one to open it up. This screen is actually where we can keep track of all of our open positions and view all of our available balances. Beginning with the positions I'm currently holding, again, we can see here I currently have a position on both Apple and Netflix. Looking here from left to right, we can actually see the columns at the top are telling us first off, how many shares of stock do I hold in this account? What was the last traded price for the day? How much was that stock up or down for the day? And then how much was I up or down for the day on that particular position? So specifically taking a closer look at Apple, we can see I currently have 60 shares of Apple in this account. The stock last traded for $131.56 today. It was up $1.50 today, and I was up $90 overall. Now, for me personally, this does not show me everything that I might want to see. So if I wanted to add additional informational columns here, I would come up here to the three little dots in the upper right-hand corner. From there, I would then look down below in this drop-down menu and select Manage Columns. This would then give me a list of all of the columns I currently have and their placement on my portfolio tab, but I could actually come down to the lower left-hand corner and select add columns. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and select search all columns and the things that I wanna add are actually the average price that I paid for these shares and then how much I'm up or down overall since buying it. So in order to find those, we're gonna come up here to search all columns and I'm gonna type in AVG for average price I can see it right up here at the top. So all I have to do is hit that little plus icon to the left of it. I'm then gonna come back up here towards the top, delete out average here. And I'm gonna type in profit and loss. So now looking down below in the list, the one I actually wanna add is gonna be unrealized P&L. So we're gonna hit the little plus sign just the left of it. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll hit done. We'll go ahead and hit done again in the upper right hand corner. Now looking below in the manage columns list, you can see those brand new columns that I just added. Now I'm not quite finished yet. I'm actually gonna move the average price that I paid for these shares all the way up and right below the position information. Now that that looks good, we'll come up here and hit done in the upper right hand corner. And now you can see those two additional columns that I just added. So now looking at Apple once again, you can see I've got 60 shares of stock. I bought it for 131.76. It's currently 131.56 and overall I'm down $12.20 since buying it. Now, moving next to the balances information at the very top of the screen. First off, we can actually see the total profit and loss for the day in the top right and then just the right of that, the total value of the account. So, in this paper money account, I was actually up $304 today and my total account is worth $997,800. Right below that, in the next line down, we can first see our maintenance margin, which is basically just what we have to maintain in the account to hold all of our current positions. If you're holding stock, it's generally gonna be 30% of the total value of your positions. 
So in my case, if we were to add up both the Apple and the Netflix position, and it came out to a total of, let's say $20,000, if we took 20,000 times 0.3, that would roughly be the maintenance margin of this account. Now that was very rough numbers, so don't look very close into that, but just the right of that is the SMA, which we're not even gonna discuss today, but it's another way that brokers are able to loan you money. Just the right of that, we can then see my unrealized profit and losses. So basically how much you are up or down on all of the positions since buying them. So overall on this account on both Apple and Netflix, I'm down just over a thousand dollars. Just below that, we can then see the excess liquidity, which is basically just gonna be our options buying power figure. And then finally, the buying power number is actually gonna show you how much we can spend on fully marginable stock. So in this paper money account, I could buy 990,000 of options and I could spend roughly 3.9 million on stock if I wanted to. Now I know I went through all of that very quickly, but don't worry, it'll make a whole lot more sense with time. Now moving on to the next tab at the bottom, the trade tab is actually where we're gonna come to place trades, kind of speaks for itself. So for example, let's say we were interested in buying some shares of, let's say Microsoft. What we'll do is actually come down here and select that big blue button that says buy order. Go ahead and select that. We'll then go ahead and type in the symbol of the stock that we did want to trade. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and type in MSFT for Microsoft and hit search. We'll then go ahead and select in this list what it is we actually wanted to trade, whether it be stock, options, or warrants. In our case, we're going to go ahead and select the stock option here. And we'll then get redirected to an order ticket where we can actually specify what it is we want to do, how many shares we want to buy, the order type we want to use, and what price we're willing to pay for it. If you guys are already experienced traders, you guys can skip past this section since it's pretty much identical to any other broker out there. But if you're not, let me break this down step by step. To begin with, the very first thing you'll see at the top is our quantity box. This is obviously where we're gonna specify how many shares it is we actually wanted to buy. So in our case, let's say we wanted to drop that down from 100 shares to 20. What we'll do is go ahead and click on the number 100 here and we'll go ahead and delete it out, type in 20, then hit done. Next up, we actually have the ability to specify the type of order that we wanted to use. In this case, it is currently using a limit order. Now, if you guys wanted to change that, you would simply click on the word limit here and you'll see there are a lot of different order types available to you. Eventually, you guys will know what all of these mean, but for right now, if you're just getting started, the three that we're gonna focus on are market orders, limit orders, and stop orders. Beginning first with the limit order, because that's already the one we have selected, this simply means we are specifying a price. We only want to buy or sell these shares if we can get this price or better. So for example, if we were to look at Microsoft right now, if we were to look in the upper left, it says Microsoft is currently going for $247.50. With a limit order, we could actually specify we don't want to buy it at $247.50. We only want to buy it if Microsoft drops down to $240. That would be an example of a limit order. Now a market order on the other hand, if we go ahead and flip it to market, you'll actually notice that the price box disappears. That's because with a market order, you are no longer specifying a price. You're saying I want these shares immediately and I'll take whatever the current price is, just get them for me. Now finally, the very last one we're gonna discuss is the stop order and this is generally used to get you out of your positions before you lose too much money. Before anyone puts in the comments down below, you can use it for an opening trade. Yes, that is true. But generally, if you're first getting started, you will use these to stop your losses, to exit your position before you lose too much. So for example, let's say you already had 10 shares of Microsoft and you said, man, if it drops below 220, it's gonna drop like a rock. So if it ever hits 220, get me out. That would be an example of a stop order. Now in our first example today, we're gonna to move forward with a limit order. So let me go ahead and click on the order type here and flip it back over to limit. So again, looking down below, we can now specify the price. And in our case, we're gonna say we only wanna buy these shares for 240 or better. Now looking right below that, the next button you see there is a time and force button, which currently says a day order only. That is simply gonna mean that if this order does not fill today, it's just gonna cancel itself at the end of the day, which in Eastern time is 4 p.m. Eastern. Now, if you guys wanted this order good indefinitely, because it's very likely Microsoft won't hit 240 today, but it might happen in a week from now or a month from now, what we could actually do is go ahead and flip this over from a day order to a good until cancel order. That is simply gonna mean that if this order does not fill today, it's gonna try again tomorrow. It doesn't happen tomorrow, it's gonna try again the next day and the next day and so on until it either fills or until you come in here and cancel it. Now, finally, the very last button we're going to talk about in today's video is right here where it says outside RTH and there's a little toggle next to it. That button is simply asking you if you want this order also good for the pre and post market as well. 
So in our case, if we did want it good for the pre-market and the post-market, we would just hit that little toggle and now it's good for it. So now looking through this order ticket, if we were happy with everything, we're about to place a limit order to buy 20 shares at 240, good until canceled. We would simply look down at the very bottom and actually slide this little toggle over to the right to submit the order. It's then going to take you to a little order pending screen saying that the order has been submitted. So it hasn't actually filled yet. We haven't bought those shares, but it has been submitted. Later down the line, if you guys decide to either cancel this order or maybe edit it in some way, the way we would do that is by first off hitting done here, then coming over here to the more button and then selecting the transactions page. This transactions page is where we can see all of our open and working orders. And right here, we can see that open order to buy those 20 shares of Microsoft at 240. So let's say here something has changed. We either want to cancel it or edit it. All we would have to do is go ahead and click on it, then either select cancel order or modify order. Let me first go through modifying it. So let me hit modify order here. Let me say I wanted to adjust up the price. I wanted to bump it up from 240 to let's say 245. And now that I'm happy with that, We'll go ahead and come back to the bottom and swipe it to resubmit it. So now if we were to hit the done button and if we were to look back on the transaction page, we should see, and yes, it has, it's flipped over from 240 to 245 here. Next up, if I just wanted to outright cancel this order, we'll just go ahead and click on it and then hit cancel order in the lower left and just confirm we want to cancel it. And there we go. We just canceled that working order. It is no longer trying to bias those shares of Microsoft. Now, I know I just showed you guys the way to place trades through the trade page at the bottom or the trade tab at the bottom, but I'd say the way you're much more likely to be placing your trades is actually from the quotes page. So in order for us to go there, let's go ahead and come up here to the search box in the upper left-hand corner, and let's go ahead and throw in Microsoft once again, MSFT, go ahead and hit search. Looking down below in the list, we'll then come back down to where it says Microsoft and select stock here. As you can see on this page, it shows you a whole lot more information. It shows you what the stock last traded for, a chart of its activity over a certain time period, and then a bunch of market and fundamental data down below that. Now, besides all that great info, you'll also notice a big sell button and a big buy button towards the bottom of the screen. Now, those buttons are going to be specifically used for trading the stock itself, not for options or warrants. We'll get to that later on. But let's say you guys were actually bearish on Microsoft now and you wanted to short the stock. In order for us to do that, what we're going to do is go ahead and hit that big red sell button. It's then going to take us to an order ticket just like before, and we're going to fill it out just like normal. We're going to begin by specifying how many shares we wanted to short. So in this case, let's say we wanted to sell five shares. We're then going to come down here to the order type. Just like before, we could use a limit order, market, stop. I mean, it's really up to you. In our case, we'll use a limit order, and we're going to say we only want to short Microsoft if it goes back up to 250 a share. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as a day order only. I'm gonna leave it just good for the regular market session, not the pre and post market. And once I'm ready, I'll just go ahead and swipe over the order to submit it. But there you go, the order has been submitted and now I have an order to short Microsoft if it ever goes back up to 250. Now, if we wanted to cancel that, again, we'll go back over to the more button in the bottom, go to transactions, click on it, and say cancel order to cancel the order outright. Now, taking a look at options trading next within this app, let's come back up here to the search box and we'll pull up Microsoft once again. So now that we're back to the Microsoft quotes page, if we actually look at the very top of the screen, you'll see a little tab there marked options. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Once we get the option page loaded, we can actually see the option chain down here at the bottom and looking right above that, we can actually see a tabbed view of all of the expirations available for Microsoft. So right here, we can actually see the earliest expiration coming up is June 24th. But if we were to scroll to the left, we can see those options go all the way out to June 21st of 2024. Once you guys have decided which one of these expirations you want to trade, you would simply click on it. So in our case, let's say we wanted to trade, I don't know, the June 24th. We'll go ahead and click on those guys. Once we do that, we can actually see all of the strike prices listed down below. And if we were to scroll up in here, we can see the strikes go all the way down to 160 and all the way up to, it looks like 410. Now, right at the money being roughly 247, we'll go back to there. And now looking to the left of those available strikes, we can actually see all of the calls on the left and all of the puts on the right. 
Now, an unfortunate downside with interactive brokers is that a lot of times these columns don't load, which can be super frustrating. But skipping over any of that confusion of not actually seeing any numbers in here, let's go through the process of actually how we would buy or sell an option in here. Now, it's pretty much the same as any other broker out there. We would simply click in the column of the option we wanted to buy. So for example, let's say we were looking at buying the 245 calls for the 24th of January. Since we're looking at the call options, we'll be looking to the left of the strike price, and all I wanna do is actually click on any of those columns. So we'll go ahead and click on it. As soon as we clicked on that, you'll notice a few different buttons populated at the bottom, actually asking what it is we wanted to do. Do we wanna sell it? Do we wanna buy it? Or do we just wanna view it? Now, in my case, for this very first example, we actually wanted to buy that 245 call. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the buy button here. You'll then notice it immediately takes us to a description screen, basically giving us a little bit more info about that option. Now, if we were to scroll down just a little bit, we could actually see the order ticket down at the bottom where we could then specify how many contracts we wanted to buy, the price we wanted to pay, the order type we wanted to use. It's exactly the same as for the stock. Now, backing out of this for a second, if we wanted to buy a put option, it would be basically the same premise. Let's go ahead and X out of this. I'm then gonna go ahead and select the 245 call once again to kind of deselect it. Now let's say we were bearish on Microsoft and we wanted to buy the 240 put, let's say. So all I'm gonna do is actually click in one of those columns just the right of the 240 put. Just like before, it's gonna ask me what it is we actually wanna do. In my case, since we are bearish now on Microsoft, we want to buy this put option. So we're still gonna select buy here. Just like before, it's gonna give me a little description of the option, give me a little bit more info. But if I scroll down, I can fill out the order ticket just like before and submit it if I wanted to. But really the process is pretty straightforward when you're just buying or selling single leg options. When we get to spreads, that can be a little bit more confusing, but I'll save that for a later video. Now, moving on from options, since it is a little bit hard to go in depth on it when I don't actually have any values populating, let's go ahead and back out of this, hit back again, and now we can actually look at the stock profile page. So now looking up here at the very top, if we were to take a closer look at the chart that we're looking at here, we can see we actually have a one day chart for Microsoft pulled up. If you guys wanted to change the timeframes, you would simply click on the numbers up here at the top to change it to a monthly view, three month view, six month, and so on. If you guys wanted to add additional studies or indicators or really just change the overall chart itself, you would just click on the little gear icon on the far right hand side. Looking at the very top of the chart settings, the very first thing it'll allow you to do is change the overall chart type. So like an area chart, a bar chart, or a candlestick chart. Right below that, you can actually change the candlestick period right here, which is the bar size, which just means how much time do those candlesticks represent. Right below that is the actual time period, so how far back are we looking? Besides that, the only other thing I think you guys will actually be changing in here is down at the very bottom where it says indicators. If we were to go ahead and flip that on, we could actually begin adding some indicators to our chart. So looking here, the very first one actually says it's an exponential moving average line and specifically the nine period average. If we wanted to add something other than that, let's go ahead and click on add indicator down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and look through the momentum indicators and scrolling through here, we're gonna add relative strength. I'm gonna hit the little plus sign just to the left of it. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll simply come up here and hit the X button in the upper right. And now I can see I just added relative strength right below my chart. Besides that on this quotes page, you guys can see a bunch of market data and fundamental data down here, like it's dividend yield, it's PE ratio, a lot of good info that could be useful to you. Now, besides that, one of the last things I'll show you guys in here is if we go ahead and back out of this and then come down here to the watch list tab. Now, this watch list tab pretty much speaks for itself. This is where you guys can create your own watch list or customize them and actually flip between all of the watch lists that you've made right up here at the top. So looking here at the top, you've got a watch list called favorites, one called IBKR for interactive brokers, and then tech companies. Now, if I wanted to create a brand new list of companies I wanted to keep track of, let me just go ahead and hit create a new list here. I'm going to go ahead and just name it new to keep it simple and hit OK. We'll then go ahead and start by actually adding a few symbols up here. So let me first start by adding, let's say Twitter, T-W-T-R. We'll go ahead and click on it in the list here. Let me go ahead and also add, let's say Meta, M-E-T-A. Go ahead and click on it in the list. And now looking at my new watch list, I've got both Twitter and Meta, and I could always add additional as I needed to. Now, besides that, you guys could of course access previous watch lists that you guys have made but aren't currently up here in a tab format by coming up here to the three little dots in the upper right-hand corner, then coming down below and selecting Browse List. 
This will then show you all of the watch lists that we currently have on here, and then we could hit the plus sign if we wanted to add one of them to our tab view. So right here, if we wanted to add the My Stocks watch list, I'll go ahead and hit the plus sign here, and I'll come back to the back button, and now you can see my My Stocks watch list as well. But that's nearly everything I wanted to cover in this introductory video to the Interactive Brokers mobile app. We didn't get to everything, but after today, you should all feel a whole lot more comfortable buying and selling stock, options, customizing your charts, and really just generally navigating the app. If I miss anything, or you guys would just like me to dive deeper into a specific tool on here, please let me know down below. But that really wraps up today's video on Interactive Brokers. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week, and I'll catch you on the next video.